Hey guys, today we're going to continue the Massive Jim Fear podcast. Toon and Golden Fox dip out relatively early. Relative being to two hours plus. Again, if you're waiting for the next Hound to Brony, I would suggest checking out the Fall of the Fourth Rift. The tone should be similar, if not better, than what you're used to with that product. Don't forget to check out Jim Fear 138's channel, as well as Cloud Cuckoo Countries. Next week, the podcast should either be The Pedantic, Romantic, or Eye of Soul. Two great content creators in their own right, if you're a fan of anime or other animated products. Today we're bitching about comic books. The government cartoons news, movies, and furry porn. Oh, and if you're that guy from 4chan who called Cloud Cuckoo Country rubbish, suck a dick. Suck a bag of day-old dicks. Oh yeah, we're also bitching about Scientology. We, we laugh at Scientology. If that upsets you, downvote us. <laughs> Speaking of Spider-Man, actually, if I may, if I, may Go ahead. Uh, I gotta ask you, what are, what are your thoughts on Spider-Man Homecoming coming out? I haven't heard anything about it. Really? I, I, yeah, I really haven't heard anything about it. I, I don't know. Sh- you don't, like, you don't I'm, watch any I, of the Marvel, I, Marvel Cinematic honestly, Universe movies? Oh, no, I do. I love those movies. So You know, I love the Avengers. I love the Thor movies. Um, I've, I've got most of them downloaded, actually. But, like, my thing is, like, after the shit that's been going on with Marvel Comics over the past couple of years, I'm just so tired of Marvel. Like, if I have to see Uncle Ben die one more fucking time, I'm oh, going to go down that. to the supermarket and I'm going to buy some Uncle Ben's rice and I'm going to find the actor who played him <laughs> and I'm going to choke him to fucking death with it. I will kill Uncle Ben myself if I have to watch him die on screen one more time. I'm so fucking tired of the the retread of Peter Parker's story. But, like, the shit that's been going down with Marvel Comics lately has been so discouraging. And Disney is letting them get away with this despite the fact that sales are flagging like a motherfucker. And I just don't care about Marvel anymore. I want Marvel to die. I want Marvel to die and go the (laughs) fuck away, and I want somebody else, an actual good comic company like IDW, to come up and replace them. Wait, wait, wait. Kishi, you have a question? (laughs) (laughs) What do you think of the new Samurai Jack? I I haven't watched it, but I've heard very, very good things. Oh, you need to watch it. It's so good. Oh, it's nice and bloody and beautiful. Oh, my God. Yeah, that was one of the things that really surprised me, because in the old one, they were airing it on, like, it was like a cartoon cartoon show on Cartoon Network. Right. So... They couldn't show blood, so all of the ba- every single bad guy that Jack killed had to be some kind of you robot. know animatronic oh, robot they, monster. Th- there's a nice gradual progression that they ease you in very gently. Oh yeah. Ooh. Yeah, but like I'm just like I don't I don't you know block spoilers or anything on Tumblr. I just kind of exist, and then if it interests me enough, I'll go and check the fucking thing out. I don't really care about spoilers well, all that much. May, may I? But uh, <laughs> but no, like, no, I was I was scrolling I was scrolling Tumblr, and it was the first like gift sets that people were making of of the new episode that came out, and that scene happened where Jack cuts that bitch's throat. Yeah, and like the blood splashes out, and I was like, oh. Jim. Holy shit! Oh, Jim. Holy shit! They, they Jim do. Somebody. He, it gets worse. Oh no, no, Jim! Oh, oh, no, I know. Oh no! Just today, I saw that. I saw that scene. Somebody had had cropped out that scene where it's like Kid Jack and his dad. Like they get run up on by bandits, and his dad goes out and just kills all of these people. That's and then how he, he makes peace with it. Yeah. At the end of the fucking scene, Kid Jack turns around. He's been watching through these like slats in the window of the of the door to the carriage that they're riding in, and Kid Jack turns around and he's just got blood all over it, like right across his eyes. And I'm like, holy fuck, Gendy, what in the fuck are you doing? No, no, Jim, no, no. He punches. A girl's head, 360 degrees. <laughs> Jesus. No, no, the, the best part is we're freaking goddamn... Uh, Jesus, I lost it. No, no, uh... <laughs> he, no, no, he, he has a mental... He keeps having flashbacks, like he's going insane. And his inner self is talking to him, he's like, Never killed a human before. They don't, they don't mince words. They let you know that when he slit that bitch's throat, that was a special moment. <laughs> Um, like, that's one of the reasons that I'm so, so happy that Adult Swim picked up Samurai Jack. I was mildly concerned about the Samurai Jack reboot, because given the trend of reboots that, like, the Powerpuff Girls reboot and everything, like, I love the Powerpuff Girls, the original series. I went and saw the movie in fucking theaters. It blew my mind. It was awesome. It, the show is so much fucking fun. And the reboot is so wrong. I Awful. want to set those people on fire. <laughs> it's it's oh. terrible. 
Yeah, yeah I, I, want, those I, I, as I well. want to watch them burn yeah. the fuck alive. I'm talking like Stalin, Gulag, get in the fucking oven type shit. <laughs> you know, the funny oh. thing is, if you go back and watch the Powerful Girls movie, it holds up. Oh, yeah, it, the movie's great. I rewatched it's still it like good. It's still really fucking good. You know, then I saw that, okay, they actually got, this isn't some, you know, new team coming in. This is Gendy Tartakovsky. Oh, yeah, he's, no. He's coming in and he's getting to finally do his vision the way that he wants to do it because Adult Swim is going to let him have full creative freedom. So he actually and, gets to show and blood. And he is running with it. He's, oh, and he's yeah, like a suicide. Kid with scissors. It's crazy. Like a kid with scissors. Gendy is just like down the fucking street and everybody else is catching up wondering where the fuck he went. Yeah, no. He, he's bringing up suicide, depression, insanity. It's real. Yeah. And I, it I gets really, that, real, really quick. Yeah. I just hope they do some of the more experimental episodes because some of my favorite episodes from the original Samurai Jack were uh, like the one where they hired a bunch of assassins to kill Jack and it's like out in the middle of winter and every time one of these assassins runs up on him, it's like it switches to a completely different art style. That was absolutely beautiful. Or Jack and the uh, Jack and the Beasts, I think was the name of the episode, but it was the Traveling Beasts. That was it. Jack and the Traveling Beasts where he has to hop rides on all of these different these different giant monsters and the whole episode is just this journey and to get to this time portal that he takes and it, it's really fucking pretty or uh, Jack and the Monks uh, where he finds that that oh, community that of monks out in the uh, out in the middle of the forest and they try to help him find a time portal but he sacrifices going back and defeating Aku to save the two mo- it, there's so many good like speculative slow take their time be really experimental with the art episodes that they did in the first five seasons or four seasons of Samurai Jack and I really hope that they don't get too drawn into like the PTSD we can finally do blood and guts it's like what Lucas did with the Star Wars pre back when he made the original Star Wars movies he had to create a special effects team they had to invent special effects to make those movies look like they did. This was back in like the 60s and 70s when they were putting all of this together. Uh, So they had to invent all of these different techniques to make these movies this good. And then, you know, the 90s come around and he's putting together the the prequels and he gets a hold of CGI and just like, I, I think something broke in it where he got this thing where he can literally do whatever the fuck he wants and you don't have to build physical models and you know do all of these crazy camera angles and shit you can position the camera where wherever you want and you can just make everything cgi and boom you can do a whole scene like that Uh, you don't even have to have human actors and he just lost it and went too deep into the cgi and forgot about telling a good story and i really hope that that doesn't happen to gendy i have more faith in gendy than i do in lucas but gendy hasn't been put in that situation where he's allowed to go buck fucking wild and do whatever the hell he wants so oh, we'll okay. we'll see if he has restraint it, or not. It does well, seem like he is, went a little too fast, a little too be. quick, but go ahead. Yeah, thing is, he only has, I think it's been, it's clear for 10 episodes-ish. Mm-hmm. So it's not like he's going to have a whole lot of room to do exper- a lot of experimental stuff. I'm sure he'll find a way to put in some twists and turns, but he's got to he's gotta get that story. Yeah, no, I, I understand. This is a trial period, essentially. What I wanted to ask you about, because you were talking about how he now has complete creative freedom, and but how George... George Lucas kind of went ape shit with it. Is you, you know uh, Jordan B. Peterson, right? Oh no, no, yeah, yeah I, fo- I follow him on Twitter. I, I like I'm subscribed to his YouTube. Yeah. I, I've yeah, been following I've been, his case kind of closely. I've also been like reading and looking into a lot of the other stuff he's said outside of you know the stuff he's famous for controversially. But his, one his of the things that, with Sam Harris yeah. are very good. Just yeah, but the. But the uh, the thing that, that interests me that's relevant to this discussion is he says that he he said in an interview at some point that he disagreed with the approach that he, he disagreed with the approach that like modernists and postmodernist artists took in trying to liberate the artist because he says that uh, limitations and giving people challenges is what makes them more creative, not necessarily giving them the freedom to do anything. I think that that's possible. Like, I'm going to tie this back to D&D, um, just, like, as an analogy. <laughs> oh. For the longest, I've been I've been doing this, this D&D group with the, uh, well, it's a Pathfinder thing, with the laughably dapper people. We, we would get together, like, every Friday, and we would have, or Saturday night, and we would have a, a, a game of Pathfinder, and we would just, we would just role play. If you, if you actually look at the rule set, excuse me, if you, if you look at the rule set, for Pathfinder, it's an entire fucking website. If you printed that entire, excuse me, if you printed that entire rule book off, you would need a fucking truck to haul it around. They have a rule for literally everything. 
literally everything. Now, within that literally everything that they have a rule for, like I, like I say, any conflict that you have, if you're willing to scroll through that website for long enough, you can find a resolution within the rules, but you'll probably just get sick of it and homebrew it for the sake of expediency. But within that rule set, you can be very, very creative. You can come up with all kinds of different characters, and they all have these particular, you know, uh, stats, and there there are certain restrictions on them. Like if you're if you're dragonborn, then you're going to be a lot stronger than a normal human, or you know, if you're a halfling, then you're you're going to be sneakier and and stuff like that. There's all of these restrictions that they put on you, but you can exercise great freedom within those restrictions with regards to how you want to play out the game. Now, I recently got a. Uh, I say recently, this was like months ago. I got a hold of a uh, copy of Mazes and Perils, which is a retro clone of uh, first edition Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. It basically borrows heavily from that model, but the entire thing, the Dungeon Master's Guide, the Player Guidebook, and the Monster Manual is a 74-page PDF. The the rules are very sparse. So I was reading over this one night uh, after I'd gotten it and just going through and talking about how excited I was. I was planning on running out of campaign. I still am, but I, I just have to find time to actually put the whole goddamn thing together. I was looking at these rules, and I was like, man, this is so freeing. Like, I've already created, like, five characters, and it's been, like, two hours, you know. I, this is, there's just so much you can do with this system, and you don't, you don't have to worry about all these stupid rules and everything. And one of my friends commented and said, I don't know, it seems more complicated than Pathfinder. And (laughs) I was just flabbergasted. Like, Pathfinder requires an entire fucking website for their rules. Just the rule set, you know. And and granted, that is like DMG and Player Guidebook and Monster Manual, but that's an entire fucking website, and it's not small. But this this 74-page PDF is more constraining than Pathfinder when it has fewer rules. So, and, and with regards to writing, I've been bringing up a lot in The Pulp Revolution, talking about, you know, all of these stupid rules with genre and everything, like hard science is this, and fantasy is this, and if you include, you know, advanced technology in your story, it doesn't matter if you have elves and dwarves, it's a fantasy, or it's a sci-fi story. All of these these hard genre divisions that really actually don't exist. So if, in my opinion, if you strip away more rules, it allows people more freedom to think outside outside of the box but rules do inspire creativity they give you a fr- like if you're just it's like it's like when you're sitting down and you don't have a story to I'm, I'm a writer so artists can probably do this as well with like you know a blank page on their on their tablet or whatever if you're sitting there with a blank piece of paper in front of you or a blank word document and you have no idea what you want to write no clue you have no rule set that you're within you're you have no world that you're planning on writing within or you don't have any pre planned planning done at all. There's essentially this no rule scenario. It's a lot hard. It freezes you. It's a lot harder to come up with everything because, you know, where do you start? Like, give me a starting point. Give me something that I can't do so that I can work my way around it. So I can understand where Jordan is coming from there. He's actually got a point. He's actually right within a certain a certain perspective. Uh, rules are, are necessary because they give us a framework to work within and the willingness to break those rules. But but rules aren't the be all end all. That's that's actually what's killing science fiction right now. Science fiction is one of the worst selling genres of book on Amazon right now. And it really shouldn't be because science fiction is fucking awesome. But it's got up it's got caught up in this kind of hard sci-fi thing if you're not scientifically accurate then you're shit kind of thing and it's really restrictive and it kind of stifles people's creativity whereas if people knew that something like Planet of Adventure existed, they would be a lot more excited about writing like science fantasy or something Something like that. So I can understand where Jordan is coming from there, but he's not necessarily right in all respect. Like there's a limit to the rightness of that statement. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Speaking of sci-fi, though, what do you think of Gary Gibson? Gary Gibson? He wrote uh, the books on my shelf, Stealing Light. I bring it up all the time whenever I want to rag on a bad sci-fi novel. I haven't read his stuff yet, so no, I, oh, I, damn. I, I, really I want to I want to hear a book burning special starring Jim Fear. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll get Jim to be the narrator for one of these days. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'd be more than happy. But my, my issue is that I have insanely low standards. Like, I mean, stupid low. Like, like uh, retardedly, like, short bus riding, helmet wearing, chest slappingly low restrictions. Oh, you Except like Except when it comes to remakes. I was Except to... when it comes to remakes. So you actually cause... like that sci-fi movie with John Travolta that was basically Scientology, the movie? Or... Oh, <laughs> Battlefield Earth? <laughs> yeah. No, no, because they weren't 
doing anything original. They were taking a existing IP and they were fucking it up. That's what they did. And now I understand why it was fucked up because if you actually go and read Battlefield Earth, that's a big novel. It's like 3,000 pages. It's huge. And there's no way that you can tell that story within a movie. Like that would require a like eight season long television show to oh, actually yes, tell the story of Battlefield Earth. Sounds like um, L. Ron Hubbard was pretty religiously devoted to this text. Eh? It's, uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a really it's a really good novel, though. Like L. Ron Hubbard was actually a very competent sci fi writer. He just decided to turn it into a religion. Like he he would joke about that with uh, with, with people in the room like Robert Heinlein and Philip K. Dick. Like they had these writers associations where they would all meet up and, and talk about science fiction and stuff because that was what they were all doing. And so, uh, like Scientology just this big uh, it's a scam it's a total total scam no 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 it's a scam it's literally a scam that's what L. Ron Hubbard set it up as like they would joke that if they took some of these sci-fi premises that they were talking about because this was back like after Roswell happened and shit and there were like religious cults around aliens springing up all over America you know they would joke around about you know all we'd have to do is you know change a couple of things and call it a religion and we could make stupid amounts of money and people like you know like Philip K. Dick were you know, on too many drugs to actually follow through with it. Robert Heinlein was like too honorable to do something like that. But L. Ron Hubbard, on the other hand, (laughs) actually fucking went out and did it. He wrote a sci-fi story and marketed it as a religion and got thousands of people to pay him stupid gobsmacking amounts of money. I don't know what to think of that. I'm not not even kind of joking around. Like, I may have a couple of details mixed up. The, the general thrust of it is there were jokes in like the late 60s about we could just turn this into a religion and then L. Ron Hubbard went and fucking did it. But if, if you set that aside, the guy's actually a very competent sci-fi author. His, his stories are very entertaining. I don't even know what to think about you know, I, I can understand that when it comes to making a lot of money, you know, that that's something everybody would go for. But <laughs> just turning like uh, making this whole fake religion, making it a scam just so that you could profit off of it. Like that. That's like, is that you, even you, evil? Like, no, there's there's actually, you know, you it is. Very, it is. You need evil. a very low respect for humans in general in order to do something like that. There, there is uh, there is actually a lady on YouTube right now and she is criminally undersubbed. I don't watch all of her content because it's it's not a topic that I particularly care about much anymore. Uh, like, I don't bother myself with the Church of Scientology all that much. But uh, her name is Tori Magoo. Okay. And she's she's this old woman who was a convert to Scientology. And she got out of it. And now she's out here exposing every single fucked up thing that that church has done. Like, the, the, way that, the ways that they psychologically abuse new initiates. The way that they cut you off from your family members and tell you mm-hmm. that you're not supposed to interact with these people. The way that they... Uh, <laughs> accuse people of pedophilia and shit like that. It, it's just like Scientology is this insanely fucked up, not even religion scam that got way too out of hand. And now you've got, you know, major stars that are uh, that are getting to be a part of this because they can afford the entry fees. And then once you get to a certain level, once you pay them enough money, you get to be a certain level in the church and then you get to start making money back from it. So that's why all of these people like Tom Cruise and John Travolta are in on Scientology because they're making money off. You know, it's not like the Catholic mm-hmm church where you actually have to go through years of intensive study to become like a bishop or, or something like that and you actually have to fucking work for your position. Now, I'm sure there's like nepotism and shit that goes in but you actually do have to put in work to advance in the Catholic church. You know with Scientology literally all you have to do is just give them enough money be willing to spout the party line and be willing to ruin the reputations of people that question you. Like it's a total fucking scam. Everybody involved in that religion knows it and they turn absolutely feral when you call them on it. It's disgusting. Yeah like did Hubbard really plan this? I don't know if he planned for it to get as out of hand as it did, but he definitely planned to make money off of it. I do know that. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. I'm, but like I, I, but like I say, the guy's, the guy's science fiction is actually very good. He should have just stuck with that. If he had just stuck as a sci-fi author, he would not have the amount of bullshit that is attached to him right now. His, his <laughs> like Battlefield Earth is one of the best novels I've ever read. It, it's actually two novels in one. It's like got the sequel wrapped up into the second half. But the first half okay. of the book is uh, the only one that I've read. I keep getting bored like in the second half and putting it down because I've been reading this book for like for like 1500 pages. Come on, dude. I'm tired. I want to go read something else. But uh <laughs> 
but the first the first half of that book is very very good and according to uh people whose opinion i trust that have actually read the whole fucking thing the second half is even better i just haven't mustered up testicular fortitude to to muscle my way through the first half again and then get on to the part that i haven't read yet but uh i can say that l ron hubbard was a very competent sci-fi author you gotta get that super male vitality you gotta, you gotta counteract the chemicals in the water that you're drinking that makes the frogs gay. Now, that's why I only drink coffee and liquor. That's it. I don't drink water. Water is the tool of the globalists. Oh, my God. If everyone's burnt out, I mean, I have more, but there's always next time. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I, 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 I was. To keep going, dude. I know you I, are. <laughs> I was willing to continue the uh, the old tirade that I was talking about earlier, but I don't want to just go randomly go for it. You're not going to hurt my fucking feelings. Okay, so <laughs> that's up, that's up um, to Anthony. He's the host here. Oh no, no, no! The, the, the name of the show is, is literally called King of Limbo. It's your show right now, boss. Just don't ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, didn't, I didn't even i didn't even know that i was going to be the the focus of the show i thought you were just getting me to co-host again no 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 i was like i i, I wanted to get you back and you kept like, saying no and i was like you know what i want one for jim and i was like i don't I, I didn't even go back and study the old one i was like i don't care if i repeat points that fucking show is great <laughs> the, only, the only thing i remember from that show is that we just shit talked a bunch of bronies yeah <laughs> And I was like, I, yeah. I, I guarantee if I watch one of Jim's shows, I could come up with enough questions. And I, I think mean, I got through, it. I think I got through 10 to 15 questions today. <laughs> That's beautiful. I mean, like I say, if you want to keep going, I'm down, man. Oh. We've only been at this for like what, uh, an hour and a half at most. Oh, yeah. Jesus yeah. Christ. So, yeah, I, I, I will just I'll just get this out of my chest. I've been getting this out of my chest multiple times to several people. I don't know if Kichi was listening in on this, but I was going on a short tirade about Disney going to the trouble of giving live action treatments to a lot of Disney animated movies and the whole subject in and of itself was very debatable. Some people like the remakes of some of these movies including not limited to uh, Pete's Dragon and such and now they're remaking The Lion King which really Oh yes! 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 I hope w- that is possible! I want to drink in the salts of the Lion King fan base! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I hate Lion King fans, mate. Oh, dude. <laughs> they are the worst. Cloud, cloud, I once, cloud, once got in a three-day-long Tumblr argument with an anonymous user who just gravitated towards me because I made a passing comment about not liking the Lion King. Cloud just went full-blown FNGR. That was magical. <laughs> That was worth the whole podcast. It's it's nice to see the gloves come off. I, no, no, I, I I have something for that if we're going to talk shit about Disney. Considering you like seeing content that speaks clearly with a message versus something designed to be attractive to as many people as possible, what, do you have any rants on Disney? Because I remember you and Cloud were talking about, you know, I, I, I like where the writer didn't just make it vague enough where it could fit everyone. And I was okay, like, like, let's... The, I thought of Frozen instantly when you said that. Like, in, in my opinion, there's a half happy medium because one of the things that I've been spending a lot of time lately railing against is uh, message fiction. Message fiction is what is destroying sci-fi and fantasy and horror. It's basically where the author has a political message, essentially. It's usually a political message. It could be some little issue that they care about, but, you know, usually it's something political. You know, Skyboat Media gets into this a lot. Like, 99% of their stories are message fiction. They also do, like, uh, anthologies called Women or People of color destroy science fiction and horror and it, it's just like 90% of it is shit. So if somebody's coming at it with a political message I'm, you know, if I agree with the political message, I'll still be disgruntled. Like Starship Troopers is a good example. Starship Troopers is one of my favorite novels of all time. I absolutely love the novel Starship Troopers. However, I am self-aware enough to admit that Robert Heinlein came at that novel with a specific political and uh, philosophical and moral bias. But he also had enough story in that novel to make it interesting, to make it a good story, even if you ignore all of the moral philosophy that goes on within that novel. But if you if you make something like I would rather have somebody write a good story that has, you know, a statement that they're trying to make behind it, than have something that's targeted to as many people as possible. Because if you target the lowest common denominator, it's going to be bland. It's going to be milk toast. It's going to be shit. You're going to be afraid to take chances. Whereas if you're if you're trying to make a point, then you don't give a fuck 
who you offend, you know, just so long as uh, the bar, I think, comes in when you supplant the storytelling and the story itself for the message that you're trying to convey. So if you make the message the most important part of the story, then you fucked up and you're probably writing a shit story because you're sacrificing storytelling to get the message across. Um, Jim, Jim, but you've, if you've you write become... a good story with a message, then you're you're doing okay and I'm probably going to enjoy your story. Jim, you've you've become my senpai with that. That was fucking magical. I, <laughs> I remember when I, I was having out with freaking Josh Scorch and he's like, I couldn't like this episode because the fucking, the moral is shit. I was like, who the fuck watches a show for the fucking moral? <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we all know that we watch it for the plot. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Of course. Yeah. If freaking, how, how many Disney cartoons where they took somebody along for the ride, like Darkwing Duck or they, or Jackie Chan's Adventures or whatever the hell, where they brought some kid who had no earthly business going on an adventure who could probably get killed. Nobody gave a shit about the moral then. <laughs> it was just dumb, <laughs> stupid fun. <laughs> well, see, that was that was the thing is that those shows had a moral, but they were uh, they were more concentrated on the storytelling than they were with the moral. Like the moral was there, and they were trying to make a point with the moral, but. But the show itself was fun to watch and they concentrated on making the show fun rather than devoting every single available, you know, second of screen time to getting this moral across, which is one of the reasons that I think that MLP is so much fun itself, because, uh, you know, it, at least in the first like three seasons or so, they didn't try to I, I haven't watched like season four and five. I think we're up to five at this point. Seven. But uh, <laughs> seven. Fuck. They're about to start seven. I, I, I am behind. No, no. You, you know, it's funny. I, I want one to mention, I don't know, Cloud might know this guy. How big of a furry are you, Cloud? I'm a huge fucking furry, mate. Do you, do you know who I've just, I, Do you know who... I, I've, just sort of, I've just sort of embraced it at this point. I used, you, I used to be, I tried to convince everyone that I was sane, but now I've got like a 5,000 word script talking about owl sex. Well, hold it, hold um, it. <laughs> Embrace the autism, Cloud. Yeah, no, Cloud, Cloud it can Cloud, only help. Do you, do you know who Sean Howell is? No. He's, he's kind of a big furry artist or something like that, and after I had him on the show, it, it's funny because I remember thinking, oh, I was like, oh, this guy's like a freaking legend he he covered freaking ninja high and he worked for radio comics and he did furlough and a bunch of like other furry comics and he's like dude before your show i've been watching nothing but how not to brony and i'm like somebody i respect likes what i do (laughs) 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 that that is a humbling moment oh my god it it is it's really humbling and edifying when somebody that you invite onto your show because you respect the fuck out of them actually enjoys what you're doing he calls me up like on saturday while i'm at work and starts telling me about like ancient brony drama from like 2012 <laughs> and he's like nobody and of wanted you're to talk the resident authority. oh yeah no and he's like he'll be like nobody wanted to ask me he's like oh, I'm sorry about the audio we could come back Jim would you like to come on for that one Cloud is you as well he, again this is a massive major you know deal in the furry fandom I, I, I if, have, I, if I, have I have the time, time though oh yeah no doubt I, I have yeah. no idea who the guy is like uh, the uh, furlough sounds familiar but I, I don't know if I've actually read it or anything like you that you know what but, I will I will go straight um, to his DA that should be it oh god <laughs> The, the, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, no, that was his. I'm already scared. No, he he but, went on. Yeah, no, I'd I'd definitely be willing to come on. That'd be fun as hell. I, I always love coming on fucking uh, Limbo podcast. Oh, this shit is always fun. I would have had you on tap, I, but you know what? I'm gonna say something that's gonna get me in trouble. <laughs> the, the minute we're freaking. Big surprise. Oh yeah, no doubt. I was about to say some shit along the lines of of like you know the minute we're British ninjas, like oh, I'm done with it's like if if I could have had Jim on tap, I would have fucking kicked Ninja to the curb immediately. This is a sample of his work colored in by one of our peers. Sam, if you, the style should look similar enough if you've seen his work. Uh, Mature content. Uh, <laughs> Doodlebug okay. is his current DA. He goes by King Cheetah as well, perhaps. No? All right, never mind. <laughs> well, it's in it's in the description of the picture, so they can just click it. Yeah. All right, never mind. I I, I thought I remember mentioned that decider, and he's like, well, I, I don't know everything about Faria. I'm waiting for the oh, day where. Oh boy. Yeah, no. He he was telling okay. me he's like he's like, do you, do you know who Mega Sweet is? I was like, no. He's like he's the the furry artist who started the whole motif about. Fluttershy being anthro and having big boobs, and he would tell me about all this crazy shit back in the day that I never thought to ask. (laughs) (laughs) Not that I was upset about it. Of course not. No. I once tweeted out, how the hell do you appeal to furries without drawing porn? And my favorite response was just, you can't. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. 
I, I remember that was the first time I remember people getting legitimately angry at Dr. Wolf when freaking he, he, he was dumb enough to make the tweet and he's like, I really wish that porn wasn't part of the Brony fandom. And I was like, I'll have you, <laughs> I'll, I'll have you know that's how fucking some of these artists eat. It's certainly not by the fucking money you're giving them. <laughs> I mean, what money? <laughs> Cunt. <laughs> Uh, seriously, I mean, whatever whatever you think about, like, furry porn or, or brony porn or whatever, that is how some of those people make their fucking bread and butter. You know, they found a market niche, and they are, at, at risk of making an innuendo, they are filling that market niche, and... <laughs> See, God, I thought God, you were going to say awesome. milking it, but... Yeah. Milking it works, just, too. <laughs> just say they're filling a hole, man. We all know it's what you <laughs> Yeah, I still remember when, when freaking goddamn Cloud came on the first time there was Crown Prince egging him on to be as freaking, vo- you know, volatile as humanly possible. And I <laughs> I kept picturing Crown Prince was this saintly figure that was beyond such garbage. <laughs> oh, God, dude. Did oh, no. channel? <laughs> I, I had to you, fight. Yeah, I, I basically started this podcast to get crowned because I remember going, "Oh, she she likes our show. Oh, you'll come on the PFC." She's like, "No, nah, no lemon pledge." <laughs> 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 How about this one? Oh, this is a lot better. I'll go on that. <sighs> yeah, there's there's a certain level of class to the Limbo podcast that you've completely annihilated by having me on. <laughs> oh no, I, I have. I, I used to I used to edit every little rotten thing out. Now I timestamp it. Now when someone says something really <laughs> retarded, I leave it in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess we go back to the questions now. We can continue talking about furry porn if you want. We can go back to the questions. What's, I'm just kind of here, man. Oh, what's the funniest thing you found on 4chan? I actually don't use 4chan. I found somebody call me rubbish on 4chan. So, like, because they have, like, the lit boards or whatever for literature. And somebody posted my channel there and they said, hey, you should check this guy out. He's pretty great. And the only response was somebody who said, nah, this guy is shit. It's 4chan, Cloud. It was probably love- somebody who went out of the way to be cunt. If, if you post anyone's stuff, you're like, oh, it's that guy self-promoting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, it is an anonymous image board, sir. So. Don't let it ruffle your feathers. Uh, uh, pff, come but, on, really? <laughs> yes, really. I had to make that pun. Had to. There was had no to. way around it. Very good, Keechan. Just good. terrible. You do I, that again. I, I will. Whenever you see an opportunity to do something like that, you fucking take it. Um, I, I, will, I will wear that badge of honor, sir. I, 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 have, I have some more cringe questions. You you talked about people who thought about Angry Birds as a metaphor for ref, the refugee crisis. Um, <laughs> would, would, would you watch Angry Birds if they would have really done it with them be explicitly Muslim for the pigs? Uh, <laughs> Instead of hillbillies. Okay, dude, I wouldn't watch Angry Birds if you fucking paid me. <laughs> I've seen Well, words. no, that's not... That's not entirely true. That's not entirely true. It, it depends was... on how much we're talking here. Because right now, I have like two jobs. Uh, three, no, four. I have like four jobs. And three of those are side gigs. I have a day job and I have like my audio production shit and I have Laughably Dapper and I have uh, Dimension Bucket. I have four jobs. My spare time is insanely valuable to me. Uh, so if I'm doing something that I really, really, really don't want to do, like watch the Angry Birds movie, I'm going to have to get fucking okay. paid. <laughs> because, <laughs> because I could be playing Fear or KOTOR or, or watching you know, Samurai Jack. Yeah, watching Samurai Jack, yeah. watching uh, Paranoia Agent or something like that. Oh. Or, uh, or the Dragon Maid show or something like that. You know, just uh, there's there's an infinite other amount of things that I could be doing besides this thing that I don't want to do. So if I'm going to devote some of my spare time to this thing that I don't want to do, I'm going to need to get paid for it. So it, it depends on numbers here, but at just like would I would I watch the movie just if they had done that about the refugee crowd? No, yeah. no, okay. definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> it was better than Superman versus Batman. I'll give you that. <laughs> I watched Superman vs. Batman and I kept going, why haven't I walked out yet? <laughs> to my understanding, watching fucking paint dry is better than Superman vs. Batman. You know, watching Godzilla 2014 is better than Superman vs. Batman. I don't know what it is with DC, man, but they just don't know how to make movies. Like, Marvel is killing it with the movies. Like, as much as I hate Marvel at this point, and I really do want that fucking company to go under, their movies and their TV shows are insanely good. Insanely good. Good. Really fucking good. Like, keep me riveted for 12 hours straight while I'm marathoning these bitches. Insanely good. But DC just can't seem to capture that same lightning in the bottle. They, they just can't seem to do it. I don't they, know what DC's problem is. They tried to with Suicide Squad, but it just didn't work. It was... 
Like the, kind of. The movie was okay, but I never want to watch it again. Yeah, I have, it should have been better. I heard that Will Smith did a really good job. Mm-hmm. In it. Yeah, Will Smith was great. Yeah, if that had been the Deadpool Smith- movie, that would have been the best damn thing ever. Oh, oh yeah, Deadpool's great. <laughs> that kind of movie was so, wonderful. So basically, if they had and the thing that the thing that really about wait, what was uh who was Will Smith playing in that movie? Deadshot. 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 Okay, never mind then. DC's. I was, about, I, was about to say, <laughs> I thought that they had because like a long time ago, DC cannibalized Wildstorm. Um, I, like I, Wild Wildcats, Storm. sir. Wildcats. Yeah. No. 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 The Wildstorm universe. Wildcats was just one. It was the most popular aspect or the most popular uh, point of view in the Wildstorm universe. But the comic company that Jim Lee created was Wildstorm, and they had. Had all kinds of fucking titles. They had like the Green Dragon. They had Wetworks. They had Wildcats. There was all kinds of awesome shit going on within Wildstorm. And then DC cannibalized it, and they fucked it to hell. Like just like they right got Grifter into the from them, I'm told, right? Thing. Yeah, Grif. Yeah, they got Grifter. And like I, the new Forty Two with Grifter was okay. It wasn't as good as like the Wildcats comics. But like I got to the point where I I bought the Grifter new Forty Two shit that came out, and I read it, and I really really enjoyed it, just because I I love of Grifter as a character. He's one of the coolest members so, of the Wildcats to me. The artist um, I generally get that does the real fan service work, his name's Gray Silverman. He was like asking, he's like, I'm going around asking a bunch of bronies, who would you be if you were a superhero? And just to be a complete fucking pain in the ass. I was like, ha, huh, I want, my, my OC would be Grifter. And he's like, I know who that is. And I was like, ah. <laughs> uh-huh. we have a good you're one here. of the good ones. You're one of the good ones. <laughs> but yeah, it's like the, the new 42 thing, it, it didn't sell as well as they were expecting it to, or at least Grifter's arc didn't. So it it ends on this huge fucking cliffhanger and I really wanted to know what happened next and there was no continuation of that comic and I'm just I'm, I'm so fucking angry at DC about that but I, I suppose I should be angry at the fans but I, I, I don't know <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you guys buy enough comics back then? That's that's fucking ancient history at this point. But yeah, no, DC cannibalized the Wildstorm universe and they basically reduced it down to like Green Dragon. They got rid of the Wildcats. And, and I know this because I'm a huge Wildcats fan and I'm collecting all of the fucking comics and all of the variant versions of the, uh, the covers and everything like that. They only got like two runs. I think they were 50 issues each or so. One in the early 90s and one in the late 90s, early 2000s. But anyway, I'll stop boring everybody with my fucking obscure ass comics knowledge. Oh no, you're not boring me at all, <laughs> sir. I, I got into all that nonsense about the same time they killed off Superman and my parents were like, oh, you should probably invest in this. <laughs> and of course that was a dead Because end. they don't fucking understand how comics work. <laughs> it was, st- I didn't understand either. I was a little kid and I thought, it, or at least yeah, a teenager. Same I loved it though. I fucking adored yeah. it. Oh, oh God. The, uh, the comics that they came out with right after the, like, I'm not a Superman fan. I, I despise Superman. He's, he's one of my least favorite superhero mm-hmm. concepts, but like the comics that they came out with right after Doomsday killed Superman. Yeah. Those were incredible. Like the guy with the metal with the Iron Man style suit and the hammer. Steel. Yeah. Uh, steel. Yeah. That that guy was fucking amazing. Kid Superman was a badass. <laughs> he just didn't give a fuck, man. He's walking around like with his sunglasses on and his and his leather jacket just picking up bitches and fighting crime and shit. Those those comics were fucking awesome. Uh, I like to think of it as it was Toon Critic meets Superman. <laughs> <laughs> it was the end. He is Superman ever. He was. He was, but I ate it the fuck up. It oh, was I know. glorious. I was kind of annoyed when Bob's like, oh, I can't imagine anyone who liked this. I was like, I adored the death of Superman art. <laughs> Allow me to introduce you to myself. Yeah, fuck off. Oh, here we go. I could go around the, t- the board and ask this one for everyone in the room. What's the longest you could go without eating meat since obviously we know Cloud is going to be the grand champion of this one? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> like eight fucking years or some shit. Oh, I, I, Jesus Christ. I didn't, I, did, I, didn't keep, I didn't keep count. How long I could go? Uh, the amount it takes for me to get from like lunch to dinner. That's about my limit. Um, yeah, uh, 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 during Lent, we're not supposed to eat meat on Friday, and that whole day, I'm waiting for fucking midnight to come around. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I'd never put myself through such torture. Oh, uh, I know. <laughs> Like, I understand the ethical concerns with veganism and everything, but like it, it just tastes too fucking good. I know. Like, steak, hamburgers, bacon. I, I just it, it just I've tastes too fucking good. I've never understood you people. I've never had cravings for meat. I'm 
perfectly happy and content to not. And we are it. perfectly happy and content being carnivores. Yeah. Well, so yeah, that's, I, that's I know you are, but what but what blows my mind is that some people have this visceral reaction to having meat taken out of their diet. They just like <laughs> if, like if they don't like if they don't eat meat for a day or two, they're suddenly like, oh, I need to eat meat, and I'm just like, why? It's what because are, it's what else yeah, no, are you, are you, those people did you are... just cut did you just cut meat out of your diet and replace it with nothing? Yeah, but yeah. Those, might. People are, those people are total fucking spurg lords, and they don't really understand what they're getting into when they cut meat out of their diet. Oh, all right, um, like well, I've I've got I, I'm not like a prepper or anything like that, but yeah. I do have like some emergency food stashed away in case there's like an ice storm or something, and you know power goes out for a few days. So I've got like some rice and beans and stuff like that, just just enough that you can subsist on for you know probably I don't know we probably got about a month's worth of food stashed away, but we've also got like spam and stuff like that because it never goes bad. It, it takes like three years for a can of spam to go bad. But uh, <laughs> you know if it if it actually comes to that point, then you know I, I could probably do okay with cutting meat out of my diet. It's not it's not necessary that I rend the flesh of an animal and you know chew it up and and devour it uh, to get to get my jollies off. I just really really fucking like the taste. Yeah. Like there's there's some there's an art to cooking steak. And a well-cooked steak is a thing of beauty, and it's even more pleasurable to eat it. It's an evolutionary at, at, trap, Jim. You can and you can have a you can have respect for the animal that it came from and everything like that. Even though you know all of the it's not like Native American, all of the parts probably didn't get used properly. They probably just ground up the bones and threw it in with the fucking meat. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get the steak that you of... can cut through like butter. <laughs> no. your Donald steak Trump now. Thanks, Jim. But yeah. no, I just I just really like meat. I, I don't really see any like ethical or moral or dietary reason to cut it out of my life. But, you know, if you want to, fine. I'm not I'm not going to give you shit. Like Cloud Cloud will attest to this. You know, he's like the only cool vegan that I know. Um, <laughs> I'm the only cool vegan that I know. Yeah, you're you're the only like non-evangelical vegan that I've ever fucking met in my life. Uh. <laughs> I'm gonna send Cloud some videos of epic meal time. No, I'm just kidding. No, I, 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 I could. I, I love couldn't. chicken. I got it. I got I a couldn't. channel you might like, uh, Jim. You ever see the... Hey, hey, hey. I'm about to make a pun. Uh. I couldn't stomach that channel. Uh. <laughs> You know what? That's a, that's a good place to end it. I have another. <laughs> that that stand. No, that pun was well done. I'm getting out my pun, damn it. That pun was well done. Nice. Yes. <laughs> we were talking about steak. That's all I had. I can't let my pun title be taken away. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> this is what I'm. This is what I'm talking about. If I laugh this hard at fucking puns, I have no standards with regard to entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> uh, puns are good. Yeah. All right. I always prefer puns to memes. Damn right. Oh, oh. But memes are magical. I don't believe in magic. I'm an I'm an I'm an atheist edge lord. Yeah, he is. <laughs> I, I, I apologize, man, but the presidency of Donald Trump disagrees with you heavily. Um, <laughs> it's not my president. Literally, I'm Australian. Uh, <laughs> Lord. Don't let your memes be dreams. Jim, Jim, exactly. are you looking forward to seeing when the Democratic Party winds up running either the guy who's in charge of Facebook or Oprah? Since, you know, we're allowed to do freaking reality stars who are billionaires and shit like that. <laughs> oh, God. That's, yeah, like, no, I'm, you know what? You guys started it. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm so fucking, like, honestly, I think that in the next election, if, if, the, the, like, this depends on a lot of shit. Like uh, and I don't mean, not dying. I don't mean to go on, like, a, a political tangent or anything, because we've kind of moved past that at this point. But if the Republicans stop fucking up, then, you know, and, and we call Trump on his bullshit, because there's been some bullshit. I'm not one of those blind Trump supporters who, like, I, uh, like I use, I use sure God that, are, as a fucking meme. Well, no, no, here's my whole, again, this, this is my whole theory. We can disregard all that. If all the Democratic Party does is, is go, look, we're just going to run somebody with charisma, we can disregard that whole narrative from the Republican Party that the Democratic Party was screwing up. Well, see, I, I think that I think that results matter. Yeah. So Obamacare is obviously a failure. Uh, so if the Republicans had actually I, gone I'm in... I'm on it. And and, I, I get it for free. And, I think you're talking and about... Drop this. 
if they had gone in and they had dropped this uh, repeal and replace nonsense and just a- actually repealed the fucking thing, then over the course of the next couple of years, people would start to notice changes. Insurance rates would have gone down because competition is coming into the market. You know, <clears throat> it would have it would have opened up the that aspect of the economy a little bit more, and people would start to notice that a little bit less of their tax money is coming out of their paycheck every week for you know socialized health care essentially assuming Uh, that they would lower the taxes yes well if you're not doing socialized medicine then that portion of the taxes i'm not saying that they're going to do everything right you know like there's obviously going to be some fuck-ups i'm not a straight republican or anything like that like I, i think that if the if the republicans actually get in there and affect real economic change like they're not they're not going to get around on the social issues they need to stop being social republicans they need to start getting on board with shit like gay marriage and and stuff like that uh, the the whole trans rights thing I, I can understand the gray area with that but you know if they if they stop with the social republicanism bullshit or the social conservatism bullshit and start focusing more on the economic issues and actually improve everybody's economic lives within the next couple of years which is why this first hundred days is so vital because it takes years for this kind of shit to actually make an effect on the economy so you you've got a good a good hundred day window there where you can affect real change and then a two-year window where you can see that change start to affect people in their everyday lives and if they make that change positive then they've got they've got the 2018 uh congress congressional elections locked and the democrats the democrats have been fucking up so hardcore that I don't even think they know how to fucking stop themselves. They they keep pushing Chelsea Clinton, who is not exciting. It's not going to fucking happen. It's obviously a ploy. They keep pushing Bernie Sanders. I mean, who's to been be fair, that is any exactly fucking what they said about Trump at first. <laughs> true, true. But, you know, Trump isn't as obviously manufactured as Chelsea Clinton is. Well, the thing about it is they are making a lot of changes. It's just that they aren't good changes. Well, see, the problem is is that Trump is doing this via executive order and Congress is dragging its fucking heels. So it's not real change. Yeah, it's going to be in effect as long as Trump is president. But as soon as somebody else gets into gets into the presidency, they're going to be able to executive order this shit right out the fucking door the exact same way that Trump did with. uh, No, no, no. What, What I'm saying is they're letting Trump run around like a chicken with his head cut off getting everyone in a tizzy. Meanwhile while no one's watching they're passing all of these laws saying hey you know all these internet laws that say you have to agree to be tracked and whatever the internet companies don't have to do that anymore you know those rules where the where you have to let the customers know if there's a breach of data they don't have to do that anymore. Did, they're did, passing those kind of laws. Well, well honestly, fair, hold it, hold it. honestly um, I like, I, like I said the, the, um, the Congress has been dragging its feet and they actually haven't passed much at all since Trump got into the presidency. So all of the stuff that you're talking about was done by Obama and his Congress. Yeah, I was about to say that's already kind of been in because of some that's, of the CIA leaks. That's Obama's fault right no, there. The thing is, like, I know that there's one <laughs> law that hasn't been passed yet. I think it still has to go through one more level and then Trump has to sign off on it, which is the one I was just talking about, where companies, if they have like a security breach and people's information gets leaked out, they no longer are required to tell people that there was a breach. Yeah, or, it's, that's that's one of these fuck ups that we have to keep calling people on, which is one of the reasons that I listen to uh, to Mark Levin's show, which I, I highly recommend. The guy's very intelligent. I've read uh, uh, the Liberty Amendments. He puts a lot of research into what it, like the guy's very much not stupid. He's not like Alex Jones where he comes out here with this face. He does scholarship, not just journalism, but scholarship. And he comes at it from a partisan perspective and he's honest about that. But that's one of the reasons that I respect him so much is like he basically supported Trump because there was no other option. Like, Trump was the fucking nominee. That was it. The the primary results came in. Trump is the nominee. At this point, we don't have a choice. We have to stop Hillary. So he supported Trump, but now that Trump's in office, Mark Levin is regularly calling Trump out on the bullshit that he's doing, and he's calling his cabinet out on the bullshit that they're doing, and he's calling Congress on the bullshit that they're doing. So there, I'm I'm not one of those people who's like, oh, God, Emperor, we have to support Trump in everything that he fucking does. No, Trump is huge. It, it, his his Congress is human. All those Republicans that we elected in, you know, in, into Congress and everything, they're all human. All of the people that he is appointing to these cabinet positions and and uh, organizational positions like uh, like the DOJ uh, sessions or or the 
um, the Department of Education. They're all human. They, they all absolutely have the uh, the, the ability, ability to fuck up, and it is very important that we call them on it when they do, because Trump listens to the people. However, however, you know, it might seem Trump is a businessman first and foremost, and businessmen A B test their their product before they put it on the market. So that's that's what Trump does. He comes out here and he says, you know, he says a thing, and then he sees how people react to it. And if people react poorly, then he puts the fall. If it's something serious like this whole uh, this whole Ryan care thing that's been going on, or the Trump care thing that's been going on, uh, he puts the fall on Ryan, and it is Ryan's fault partially. Uh, but he lets Ryan take the fall, and uh, honestly, Ryan needed to fucking go anyway. But uh, he he lets these people take the fall. Trump comes out smelling like a fucking rose. And he gets to do something that people actually want because he has people monitoring like Ben Shapiro's show and he has people monitoring Mark Levin's show and he, has, he watches Fox and, you know, all of these other news outlets and stuff like that. Like he's, he's very keyed in and he's very much not stupid. Like that's a big mistake that people make when they're dealing with Trump is that, OK, he may seem like a buffoon, but he's not stupid. Maybe he's a little bit autistic. I've, I've kind of thought that that might be his probably he might have a little touch of the t- <laughs> but, uh, but he's very much not stupid. So he's he's A B testing everything that he does. Um, and, uh, I mean and that's what I said kinda of early on when I was talking with even just like my parents on the phone that randomly call me up and like my mom who was like the really old school left wing feminist would say like, Oh my god, Donald Trump is a total joke and I'm like, Well, I mean he could win and she was like, Are you insane? And I'm like, eh. And then he won and I and then, and then he won, and I was like, well, I did say he could. <laughs> I, I got over that after two days, Jim. Uh, the way I see Trump is he has a few good ideas, and his good ideas are like a quarter. A nice, shiny he's, quarter. He's perfectly perfectly usable. Uh, it works, but that quarter is surrounded by shit. So it makes it seem like those good ideas yeah. well, aren't going to look any good to anyone. Well, what, what was yeah. super disappointing oh, right. to me was that the news media was just focusing too much on, like, offensive of stuff that he says from time to time and that like i think it was nerd writer who pointed out that this may have been a deliberate misdirect by trump to get them to not focus on his actual policies and instead to focus on him saying like outrageous stuff on twitter all the time oh, oh no, dude, no dude that's that's definitely what's happening like i'm not i'm not one of those people who buys into the 3d chess master thing like i i don't think trump is that smart or that able to see like this this he's not fucking paul atreides Okay, he's not. Yeah, I know. Like, it, it, like I, I think I pointed out his strategy against the media was quite simple, but they just didn't. They just didn't respond. He's a pro wrestling <laughs> just, deal. That's all he is. He knows yeah. how to work exactly. people up. Like, like he'll he he comes out here and like everybody for the past like three or five years, this shit has been building, and I've been watching it happen through like the men's rights movement and GamerGate and and all of this other shit that's been going on. Uh, this crazy shit that's been happening on college campuses and with the legal system and stuff like that. People are are getting fed the fuck up with this left wing outrage machine. And like if they actually brought cogent points, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But they just scream racist, sexist, misogynist, and those there's ones a, have there's lost another their thing, meaning. Though, that I kind of wondered about that though. A lot of these So so what hang on, I had just a sec. Right. So so what Trump did was he came out here and he said, I don't fucking care what names they call me. I'm going to say what I think is true. And, you know, I I say that with a grain of salt because I don't know if Trump actually thinks that these things are true, but that's the way that he came off during the primaries. I'm going to come out here and I'm going to say what I think is true. And if the media decides to tar me, then fine, they're lying. I don't have anything against Mexicans. I don't have anything against women. I've gotten into arguments with women, but I don't have anything against women in general. You know, I'm going going to come out here and say what the fuck I think. And that was just a breath of fresh air to all of the people who are sick of this left wing media narrative that's been going on where anybody who is slightly to the left of Mao Zedong is immediately fucking Satan, Mecca, Hitler, you know, demon pants. but hold just, it, hold it, hold it. The media did this all during George W. Bush, and he didn't throw a goddamn crybaby fit about it. And maybe that was his weakness. <laughs> 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 
His weakness, he got two Maybe terms. his Maybe his weakness was that he had too much temperament. I wonder yeah. what things would be like if Obama took to Twitter every time someone said something shitty about him. Oh, shit. Oh, God. Obama, Obama just doesn't, doesn't fucking stop. All the more entertaining, I think. I think Obama's a worse narcissist than Trump is. Like, I'll, if I'll freely admit that Trump is a fucking narcissist, but Obama is fucking horrible. Why do you think so? Like, the entire time with his with his presidency he was just like every speech that he gave it was i me you know that kind of shit just they're like playing himself the fuck up and then he finds out that he's not the president anymore that this that he's not dictator for life and this guy is about to come in and he's going to completely fucking All right, Jim, wreck this is this is the thing i think you don't, Jim, I don't that think you put together i think the right doesn't understand this if he could have had a third term he would have killed trump oh yeah <laughs> No doubt. No. I really don't think so. I really I think don't. So. That's, that's that's you drank the Kool Aid, there, son. <laughs> no, 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 no. That was when that was when Obamacare was really coming home to roost, and people were finding out that this wasn't as good of a deal as they thought it was. And you know, shit was shit with like the Benghazi thing, and like people were really fucking tough. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm not sitting here and fucking saying that Trump won by a fucking landslide. Which I mean, according to the Electoral College, he kind of did, but. Like it was, it was a slim fucking. He won the states fuck. by a landslide, but he won the pop. He didn't win the population. He lost it by a small minority. Yeah, yeah that, it was, it was a small. Like it was, it was a kind of like ninth inning. He he just slid in and and got the fucking goal. And it had a lot to do with people like you know Stefan Molyneux and and Alex Jones and whatever out there pushing this counter narrative and trying to uh trying to be the opposite of the mainstream media which were obviously in the fucking Democrats pockets and factually in the Democrats pockets if you go and if you trust WikiLeaks it, okay. it was a let me let me comment on it that we fought long and hard to get the fucking English not to tell us how to run our politics, and now we got some butthole from England telling us how, you know, this, that, and the other. What is the logic Wait, behind that? WikiLeaks is run by some British asshole. <laughs> some butthole from England. Are you are you talking about Julian Assange? Yeah, isn't it? No, I that guy's Australian, French. mate. He's Australian. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> So, so he's a convict another point Englishman. of pride to Australia. Yeah, 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 he's 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 uh, the kind of Englishman the English wanted to send to the other side of the fucking world because they didn't want him around. No, I know, I know, fucking. I, I always thought yeah. of Australia. I mean, I mean, the dude's been hiding out in the fucking Ecuadorian, uh, I think it's Ecuadorian <laughs> embassy for like fucking six years now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah dude's not welcome in England. Of course, he's Australian. <laughs> Ah, uh, same thing. One just has koalas. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, we don't just have koalas. We have spiders and snakes. And oh no, I got bitten. Oh, I'm dying. Oh, yeah. wildlife. Oh. <laughs> the number of Australian wildlife jokes. <laughs> I still remember. I, I actually, I, I actually have a picture of the uh, the uh, cover of the Tyranids rule set from Warhammer 40k, and it's this this, this giant fucking monster with like this. Ilo- it looks like something out of Aliens, just the giant blade fucking arms, and it says Australian wildlife at the bottom. And I oh, haven't let go of it because that's fucking accurate. The wildlife that y'all have in Australia is fucking horrifying, dude. My God, this is gonna be a nightmare to edit. Like, y'all have spiders the size of fucking... Don't edit it! 